Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you various ways to time block using Notion as well as our tips for time blocking. If you're new to this, it's a technique where you block your day and make sure that you have assigned a task or schedule to each time slot. This can help you keep focus and stop unfocused work. If this is helpful, it would help us out a lot if you could subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. So let's dive right in. We first want to show you how to create a time blocking Notion template. So first we want to go to an empty Notion page and we're going to title this time blocking Notion template. And let's go with an icon. So you press add icon and then we're going to go to a clock. And if you'd like, you can add a cover by clicking add cover. And we're going to go ahead and go to the top right hand corner, three dots and do small text full width. So we get more space on the page. And now if we click empty page, we can get started. So we're going to make one database for time blocking, and then we'll be showing you different views on how you can look at this. So first let's go with a calendar view by typing slash calendar. And then we're going to do plus new database, and we're going to call this database time block database. And as you can see now, it's in a month view. So we can go to the three dots here and then adjust the layout so that it's in week view like this. And now we can start our time blocking. So let's say that we want to start with this Monday here. So we're going to be adding an item. So time blocking is where you block your time in your calendar. So we ideally want to fill this Monday with blocks of time. So if we click plus and then add an item, we can title this wake up and morning routine. And let's say that this is going to take us an hour after we wake up. So we wake up at 830 and it's going to take until 930. And you have to make sure to set up end date and include time like this so that you can show the start and end time. And then the tag is going to be personal like this. And now if we click out, you'll see that we don't see any of the properties that we just added. So we have to go to the three dots here to properties, and then we want to toggle on tags. And we're not going to toggle on date because we're going to show you another way to show the time slot. So as you can see now, we can see that it says 830, but we can't actually see the actual time slot. So if we were to turn this on, it's going to look like this. So it's still kind of hard to see the time slot. You can also additionally click on this date property and then edit property and then change the date format to month, date, year with the time slot like this. But it looks a bit clunky because you see the date and then you see the time slot. So we recommend that you actually add a formula here. So we're going to hide this date again. And if we were to click here, we can do plus add property and formula. And this formula is just going to show the time 8.30 to 9.30. So if we go to edit property and then edit, we can put the formula in through here. So we actually already prepared the formula. So it's going to be like this. And we're going to explain this formula to you now. So if we go here, now we see this formula. So this is the date property. And the format date is what's going to format this date into whatever format you want. So in this case, it's going to do H with a colon MM. So that means hour and then minute with a slash. And it's only taking the date start. And we're going to add this to format date, date end with hours and minutes. And finally, you can add styling options by adding style here. And then you can put bold underlying gray background. And this is something you can play around with. So if you click on this style part here, it's going to actually show you the style options. So for example, if you have B, it's going to stand for bold. If you have U, it's going to stand for underline and so on. So this is really based on what you like to do. So now we can click done and then we can add a icon here such as this clock. And now you can see a bold version of this time slot with a gray background and an underline. So if we click out now, we can actually show this by going to the three dots here, properties, and then show formula. And let's also change the name so it's not called formula. We'll change it to time. And 
finally, another thing we can do is move this up a bit so that it's above the personal tag. So if we go to properties here, we can adjust where this shows up by dragging it like this. And now we have this wake up morning routine, 8.30 to 9.30, very clearly marked. So let's go ahead and fill these in further. So we're just going to keep adding them now. So now we've basically filled in the time slots all the way until lunchtime. So now what we can do is we can sort the time so that it shows in the correct order. So if we go to sort, then we can sort it by date and then make sure that it's sorting by ascending save for everyone. So now no matter if things get out of sort, then it's still going to show it at the correct time slots. So now what we're going to do is make sure that all of these are filled in just so that we can show you how it would look like. Of course, if your schedule is different every day, you can do as you wish. So now we're going to control click this one and duplicate. And then you can move it over to Tuesday like this. Control, click, duplicate, and move it over to the next one like this. Alternatively, you can do Command, Control, D, and then duplicate it like this and move it as well. And now we have our wake up and morning routine on every day of the week, and we can do the same for all of these as well. Now everything is filled in from Monday to Friday, and then now we can go over some different view options. So if we go to this three dots, we can first just make sure to remove this database title so it looks a bit cleaner. So we can go to layout and then hide database title like this. And now we're going to start adding new views. So if we go here and we duplicate this, it's going to show the same view onto the next view like this. But instead of this calendar view, let's say that we wanted to look at it in board view. Then we could click the board view button here, but now it's organized by the different tags that we put. So we have to go to the three dots here, and then we need to go to group, and we're going to group this instead by its date. So it would look like this, and now it's in relative date. So what we need to do is go to day, and then we can color columns like this. And we can also decide which properties we want to show. So tags and the time. And we can move the time like this. And now we see it pretty much the way that we saw it in the weekly view. But now you have a lot more flexibility on what exactly you want to show. So if we go to filter here, you can filter the date. And let's say that we only want to see this week. So then you could do like this and save for everyone. So it's only going to show this week's time block schedule. But alternatively, you can also show only today. So if we go calendar view here and we duplicate this now, then we can start changing the different types of filters. So if we're going to rename this, this is a board view this week. And then we can do board view today, for example, like this. And all you need to do is click the filter button and filter it by today. So start date is, and then all you have to do is choose today and you have opportunities to do today, tomorrow, yesterday, one week ago and so on. So if we do today, Say for everyone, then you only see today and you would also have to go to group and hide empty groups like this. And now you would just see one column. So this could be useful if you want to show it, for example, on the side. So if we had two columns like this and one side had something else and then you wanted to put it in like this, you could potentially hide these hidden groups like this and then it would look like this on the side, which could look quite nice as well. So the next option we wanted to show you is that you can also view it by table. So now what we can do is we can click here board view today and duplicate this one. And we can change the layout to table. And then what we can do is we can move the time slots over here and the tags next to it. And then we can just hide the date property by going to the three dots properties and hiding date. And now we have a very clean look as well with our table view. And we can just rename this table view today. And of course, you can choose different filters here as well and show different options. 
So now it's actually grouped. So we can also go to the three dots here and remove the group, none, and it would look like this. And next we can also show you how to do it by list view as well. So if we duplicate this one and we can do list view and change the layout to list. And then we can go to properties and then choose to show the time tags and remove the date property. And it would look something like this. So again, the list view, the problem is that the two properties and the title is so far spread apart. But again, if you do in column view like this in two columns, and let's say that you move this into this column over here, and you had something else on the right hand side, this could be another great way to display your time blocking schedule for today as well. So these are some of our options for time blocking. And finally, we wanted to have some tips on how you can time block. So for example, you can experiment with the tags. So if you were going to share this time blocking view to others, you can go to share and then share it to web so that you can show everyone exactly what your schedule is. And if you have time blocks where you don't want to be disturbed, you can just put, for example, focus work do not disturb so that they know that this is a time when people cannot schedule things with you. But then let's say that there is meeting time, then they know that this is the time when they can schedule meetings with you. So in that way, you can really make sure to optimize your tags when you're time blocking. So you know exactly what time is for what. And if you wanted to take this even further, you could put things that you're planning to do inside of the template. So for example, check email slash admin, you could kind of make a task list inside here so that you know exactly what you're supposed to do during that time block. And finally, the other thing that we suggest is that you don't block every single task and time into your calendar, but make sure to also have some leeway so that if something doesn't go the way that you plan on, then it's not all messed up. So for example, if you had personal time, maybe that's a time when you can not actually write out what you're going to do, but be a little bit more spontaneous and just take it easy. So in this way, you can really separate the focus time from your personal time and make sure that you're spending equal amounts of time for everything and that you're scheduling everything correctly. So that's the basics of how to time block using Notion. We'll be leaving the link to this template in the description below, as well as the formula that we used. If you have any questions, comments, or anything confusing in this video, feel free to let us know, and we hope to see you in the next one.